welcome to Adam versus the man joining us in the Garden of Freedom studios remotely from all the way two hours south in Phoenix, Arizona, my friend Rory Margraff. He is a children's author and has some really powerful titles. I've seen these around at uh, events that I've attended as a speaker over the last couple of years and always had positive reviews. And, and just from the titles, if, if you care about any of these principles, you're gonna see how brilliant it is what Rory has carved out as a, a niche for himself as a children's author. Uh, his first book, I am a free American, dot, 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 right, question mark, a guide to some of America's silliest and probably unconstitutional laws. Next, I know my rights, a children's guide to the Bill of Rights and individual liberty. Now, I, I we're going to come back to this because this is such a cool talk. I mean, I'll, right away, as someone who is, you know, looking to have children myself, uh, you know, I, I I also used to be a child uh, at least at one point in my life, uh, uh, as I as I've been told. Um, but uh, this this uh, a children's guide to the Bill of Rights and individual liberty. I want my children to be able to go into the world and interact with other people in a way where they're able to assert their rights simply because it makes them safer. And I think of this is just like a, a better version of stranger danger instead of being like, be afraid. It's like, be strong. I mean, there's right. so I, we're going to get into this and the implications for parenting his latest title. I own myself, a children's guide to self ownership and voluntarism. I'm really grateful for, the, for this opportunity to, to interview to you today, especially in this age of coronaphobia <laughs> and totally separate. It's kind of nice to, to actually, in a bubble for a few minutes, examine the implications of the lockdowns, the shutdowns, especially school closures, and the fact that whether they like it or not, American parents by the tens of millions now have a way more active role in their children's educations. And I think that's something that Rory would celebrate, right? Rory, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, Adam. So Rory, I mean, I, I gotta get the background before we get into these specific topics. How did you get started on this? What, what, like, is you clear, did, did you have a clear vision of this niche as an author? Did it kind of come to you all at once? And then how did you get into this? So I've wanted to write since I was 10 years old. Um, so I had an old Olympia typewriter and everything. And I thought I was going to be the next Ray Bradbury. And problem is, Bradbury already kind of did it. So <laughs> it's hard to follow. Um, but as I got older and I started getting more involved with the liberty movement, I started writing articles um, with different organizations. So being libertarian and fee and the Freedom Today Network. And I ended up writing an article um, for fee kind of describing an event when I was 16 and I got stopped by the authorities for being present in a public building. And I got stopped and questioned and I answered every question. I emptied my pockets when asked and and then I got picked up a few minutes later by my mom and I told her what had happened and she basically slammed on the brakes in the parking lot and I got a 20 minute civics lesson on the ride home. And so she told me basically explained the Fourth and Fifth Amendment and kind of took me to school that day. So she was not pleased. Um, but the response to that article was really split where half the folks seemed to think I, I did the right thing. Half the folks thought my mom did the right thing by lecturing me. But everyone agreed that they were shocked that at 16, I didn't know better. And even the folks that said I did the right thing said you should at least know that you have the right to refuse. And within maybe 48 to 72 hours of that article coming out and seeing the response, I found that most American adults don't know their rights. They don't know how to assert them. I started looking up resources for kids and I realized that there aren't a lot out there. So I think within 96 hours of that article being published, I had a rough draft of the first book of I Know My Rights. And it just became a kind of a passion project. I had an illustrator 72 hours later. I found Andrea or she found me really. Uh, she did such a wonderful job with it. And uh, so the first book was definitely just a passion project. I just wanted to get it out there and it's gotten such a wonderful response. We've decided to turn it into a full series. Yeah, no, that's, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, this might be like jumping into the, the, you know, the, 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 the sort of 
darkest side of what you are protecting people from, mm -hmm. what you are protecting children from. If you teach your kids to just do whatever adults say, right. and a, an abusive teacher or cop or priest can really take advantage of them. But if right. you teach them that they have an independent identity and rights, just even as a child, being able to verbally articulate that in the face of an abuser or an attacker might be the difference between life or death, a life of trauma or, or, or not. Uh, I, I mean, so many things. A, a, am I off the mark here? How much have you gotten into, you, you, you know, what are you afraid of? It? And, and how much have you seen, you know, places where that's gone badly, as mm -hmm. in your case, in a very minor, you know, sort of low stakes situation versus, you know, more high stakes situations? Yeah, we, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, that comes up more when I think we talk to parents. Um, so I often ask readers and parents why they're using my books and, and or just even talking about the subject at all with their kids. And, you know, as you pointed out, you know, my situation was very, you know, it was a very low risk situation. I pretty much just kind of got scolded for being present, even though it was a public building. Um, but, you know, you start to see with a lot of parents that they, their, their fears are very real. Um, whether it is law enforcement or a t public school teacher or any teacher, any authority figure. And so I, I think parents have connected one, one thought to the other that not just having the right in front of state authority, but any authority, that I have the right to protect myself and to be free from harm, from aggression, from force. And I think that's what a lot of parents are starting to see and they want their kids to be strong and to be you'll be able to protect themselves even if it's just raising their voice and saying no and so I, I think a lot of you know it's a very interconnected idea you know it's not just state authority you know yes the bill of rights technically only applies to the government but those rights still exist as natural rights and we you know we have the right to be free from that aggression from other people not just the state and people are definitely starting to put that together yeah so there's it seems like that it, it, it in one sense there are two completely different valuable takeaways that, that, that are really critical from, from any children absorbing your work. And one is just from the parent's perspective, even if you like the current system as it is, mm -hmm. there will always, if we need the current system to protect us from bad people, it means that there are bad people in the world. Some of those mm -hmm. bad people are going to get into positions of authority within whatever, however you want to describe systems of authority, government, social, religious, community, anything like that, uh, that bad people get into positions of authority and individual rights and due process and, and assertion of individual rights is, is critical to protect from mm -hmm. abuse of the system. But then the, the other thing is that it, it, it really is paradigm shifting. And you alluded to this when you said that, you know, most adults in America don't know how to assert their rights. But it's a deliberate programming, isn't it? That government schools leave yeah. out civics and economics. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, basic mental health practices. They don't teach, well, very, they don't teach meditation in, in any government schools that I'm aware of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or at least not on any widespread scale. I'm sure there's some like rogue teachers experimenting with, you know, you get, getting these dangerous thoughts to their children, like explaining how government works and, and how their rights work. But even within that, that realm of just, you cannot object to this, as, uh, even as a statist in a sense, you cannot object to this because this is one of the things that the current system pretends to recognize, mm -hmm. right? It pretends to say, yes, you own yourself and you have rights under the Bill of Rights and you should be able to assert these in the face of corrupt authority. So have you had success you know, outside of the movement, getting these books more mainstream, getting them into general curricula or uh, used by homeschooling groups or, or recommended by by other, uh, you know, homeschooling advocates? And yeah, actually, we, we have had uh, some success with that. And, you know, one, one of the things that I've really enjoyed when I when I talk to parents and readers is is the the political spectrum doesn't seem to matter. And, and part of that is we 
you know, one of the things I did with writing this book is really strive to keep it from being political in any way. We wanted to keep it an apolitical book and just present the information. And I think that's appealed to a lot of different people across the, the political spectrum. Um, so we've we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot, I'll talk to people and I realize they're hyper conservative or hyper liberal we left and right and you know but at the end of the, at their core when you just talk to them and just present the information without any kind of alliteration they absolutely accept these ideas and believe in them um you know it's just and for a lot of people they've just never been been taught that and so and as you point to you know the you know most public schools you know maybe about half the states actually will teach these things as a matter of law not just a matter matter of history um, in the United mm. States, but a good chunk of the states don't even really require it. Um, so, but it's that old, uh, so whether that's intentional or not, I can't say. I've been looking to find that one email or that one memo from 50 years ago. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's that old saying that no one is <clears throat> going to give you the education necessary to overthrow them. And I think right. when it comes to our rights, it's the same thing is no one's going to give you the, the information necessary to protect yourself from them. And, you know, so that's, I think, the appeal to that broad range of uh, parents, both whether their kids are in public school, private school or home school, and regardless of their political affiliation, when it comes to when you put it in the context of the individual, particularly their individual child, that's all that matters is teaching their rights and understanding those ideas. They don't care about politics at that point. How would you categorize or, or label your niche? Um, it's good. You know, you know, we always just, uh, you know, I kind of present it as civics uh, just because of that apolitical side. Um, you know, we, I don't try to brand it, you know, and occasionally people will, uh, I think, read between the lines and go, I think he's a libertarian. And I'll sit there kind of in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, so because about that, I mean, you put the word voluntarism in in the title of mm -hmm. of the of this last book, and your other ones, I think, kind of could could pass the neutrality test, and and I think they do. I mean, I think libertarianism itself passes the neutrality test because it's not a political philosophy; mm -hmm. it's an ethical philosophy that we apply to politics. And for anybody who's watching who's not libertarian, what I mean by this, I think is summed up by my favorite quote from Larry Sharp, which is, you can, a libertarian says you can be as liberal or conservative as you want, as long as you don't force it on anybody else. So we really do not challenge your liberalism or conservatism in terms of your preferences for systems of governance or society or communities that you wanna live in, just the ethical premise. Right. And so in that sense, voluntarism, and it's, it's a very unknown, it's a, it's a relatively esoteric word, you know, way more people know the word libertarian than, than voluntarist. But I, I love the idea that just, it's, yes, yeah, civics books for children that, 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 uh, that are unique because they don't pull punches like all the other, you know, bullshit versions of this that, uh, I mean, do, do you have much competition? I've seen, you know, a handful of other attempts at you know freedom oriented children's books in my mm -hmm. you know 14 years as an activist but none that that you know really uh you know have have the presence of yours yeah you know it's um it's interesting the way enough of the books are out there but what's interesting is most of them have been around for at least 10 years 15 20 years um, so nothing's really been updated. Um, and then most of my research, what I found is most people are teaching, particularly like the Bill of Rights or the Constitution, it's a matter of history, not a matter of yeah. law. And, yeah. And that seems to, it Good creates, you know, to a child, history may not be as relevant, you know, and, and you know, I'm 30 years old, so history is very relevant to me. I'm a big student of, of history, but, you know, to an eight-year-old or a seven-year-old, they're probably not going to care what happened 233 years ago. So we tried to take it and put it in the context of law and say, so when we present, say, the, you know, the Fourth Amendment, it's not just, well, you know, this recommends that they get a warrant. It's no, this says that you can refuse a search unless they present a warrant to you. And if they don't have a warrant, tell them to go get a warrant. You know, this says, you know, the Fifth Amendment says you don't have to answer questions. You can refuse. You can ask for your parents or your lawyer with the Sixth Amendment. Don't be afraid to do that. And yes. so it's uh, so for us, it was really about putting it out there as a matter of law. And, and from what I've seen, most books just seem to kind of present either the, the just the text and say this was important 
or at one point, or they'll kind of present a, a kind of a paraphrased version of uh, each amendment. And the problem with that is they end up leaving clauses out. And for me, it was important to actually have the original text and then break each clause down. Um, you know, and uh, I think my favorite part was trying to explain what eminent domain was to children. And, uh, mm. you know, that was a, the takings clause was a fun one to explain. And the original draft had an extra paragraph in there why I didn't like it. But, <laughs> you know, that uh, I turned that into a final sentence and let it go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. So what what's your take on homeschooling or unschooling versus institutional learning in general? Uh, you know, I love the idea of it. Um, so I'm a product of private school and public school. So private school for, till eighth grade and then public school. So I've kind of seen both sides of the brick and mortar style. Um, but as I've gotten older and I look around, I start to see more of the homeschooling is becoming bigger. A lot more families are being drawn to it. I love the idea of unschooling, that undirected learning. Um, I think that really capitalizes on the fact that children are naturally curious and it lets them explore the world in their own way. Um, so for me, it's it's been really fun to see this becoming more popular and to see parents and families and communities coming together to kind of take charge of their kids' education, and but also just letting the kids teach themselves and learn themselves and discover what interests them, what's their passion, and letting them pursue that as best they can. And so for me, I think it's absolutely terrific. And I also just personally love the fact that you can control the curriculum as you choose. That for me is probably one of the biggest things, particularly with public versus public schools. Parents generally have no say in the curriculum and you know, and no, nor do the students for that matter. And the bigger problem is you, most public schools, you can't even find what the curriculum is. And, you know, whether it's on the uh. website, you know, at least with charter schools and things, which I, I love the idea of, you can at least find what they're teaching on their website. Um, but I think, so for me, that, that control for the families and particularly for the students, I think is just wonderful. So coronaphobia season, is upon us. I guess I, I hope we're we're towards the end of it. This so is I, the I'm last afraid, day. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> no. I. I'm. I mean. I. 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 My being hopeful is that to suggest that we're on the, you know, downhill slope mm -hmm. of this. And to be clear, I don't mean the virus itself. I mean the forced unemployment crisis that yeah. is that is the much bigger problem right now. And obviously the virus is, is going to run its course, uh, you know, regardless of the economic mm -hmm. situation. And there's, uh, re regardless of that, there's a, uh, we, we had a sudden cancellation of most schools in the country, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, about halfway through the spring semester. And it, it, it's actually very strange right now for parents who have children who might go to school in the fall, right. as in they don't know. And this is being debated at the national level. Are we going to have regular government school convening in the fall or not? And this has huge implications, or as, as, excuse me, as Donald Trump would say, huge implications uh, across the board, but especially for parents now. And I think a lot of parents just with the uncertainty, if they can, are going to plan to keep their kids home next fall, not out of fear of the virus necessarily, although that might be a contributing factor, but in the sense of, well, we got to make plans. You know, I, either I, I got to make plans for my job, either I'm going to be working from home and taking care of my kids at home, or I'm going to be back at work in an office or, you know, point of retail or a bar restaurant or, or whatever else it is. And there is a, you know, a, a huge portion of, of, of American parents right now who have just gone through this sudden forced homeschooling experience. Mm -hmm. is, is, is this a silver lining? What's your take on this whole situation? Um, you know, it's a silver lining in that I think it opens a lot of people's eyes to the benefits. Um, I think a lot of parents are going to see their kids being a lot happier in general uh, than being home and learning with their families and their, you know, their siblings. Um, so that for me is probably the biggest thing is to see kids being genuinely happy while learning. Mm. Um, you know, the, it is tough though, especially for families that are used to working, you know, both parents working and things like that. It's not something they're used to. Um, so it is going to be a bit of a struggle. 
Um, what I'm excited to see, though, especially if, if you, uh, you know, folks follow uh, Corey D'Angelis over, at, uh, I think, the Reason Foundation and then uh, uh, Carrie McDonald over at Fee, you know, one of the things they found is a lot of parents are actually enjoying it. Um, a lot of parents are enjoying the prospect of teaching their kids and they never thought they thought about it, but suddenly, you know, they were suddenly having to do the research and finding the materials and, and putting together curriculums. And, uh, and, I, and I think it was Carrie who actually said, you know, one of the things is don't necessarily put your stock in that curriculum. You know, one of the most important things you can do is just play with your kids. And, and that does wonders for them, especially for young children. So I, I think as we go forward, I think a lot of parents are going to be looking to go back to government schools or public schools, uh, just because, especially again, those those households that have two parents working or you know single parent households, that is going to be a tough transition. But I think we're going to see a lot of parents as well that want to continue that, and more importantly, I think you're going to see a lot of children want to continue with homeschool education or at least some kind of unschooling or or community learning rather than being put back into a school, uh, especially after they just got out. Um, and got to see what the other side looks like. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a bit of a clash in the fall, but I think you're going to the the homeschool movement, the unschool movement is going to have a lot more supporters going forward. Um, so I think it's just wonderful. And uh, and and there's just for the parents out there, there are so many resources out there. Um, if you have a phone or a computer, you literally have access to virtually all of human knowledge. So there's plenty of resources out there to help you along the way. And you just have to type it in Google and it will find everything from resources you can pay for to free resources. Um, check out Khan Academy if someone's having trouble with math. You know, that's a free resource and I've used it before myself. So definitely take advantage of this time. You know, I know it's gonna be difficult for a lot of people, but I think if we take advantage of it now, a lot of people and a lot of children are going to be a lot happier. Um, and I think they're gonna see a better quality in their education. So, Rory, what's your final pitch to parents? Why should they get ki their kids your books? Ooh, I'm going to try to do this without sounding like I'm begging. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, for for me. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me interrupt on that point, if I may, because because that is I, I I wanted to I for any parents who who are watching this, uh, there is an element of of begging to say. This is this is so important. Please don't let your children suffer. Please don't let your children be abused by corrupt people in positions of authority. Please do not send your children out into the world with a, with without a sense of 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 being able to uh, just assert their rights and be strong adults in in all the ways that have been robbed from us. Even myself, people who see as this perfectly assertive, you know, libertarian public figure. Like, no, I get it. I was. I was, you know, conditioned enough, propagandized enough to join the Marines, you know, to, to, to go along. I went, I went to government schools through, through middle school. And then I, I went to private high schools, you know, similar to you. Um, and I, I was very fortunate to have that break. I did my last two years at the Native American prep school and it was an amazing experience. But even there, it was uh, generally speaking, uh, an unchallenged paradigm of authority and uh, obedience equals death in a lot of situations like it's it's kind of a cheesy slogan to say obedience equals death but for children if they are if you if you don't teach them to assert their rights mm -hmm. and they are obedient to someone who is trying to abuse them in whatever way it is they're going to get taken advantage of giving them the perspective of these books prevents them from being victimized like that yeah. i beg you if it, with or without rory's books if you don't like Rory, if you don't like his books, find a way to give your children this awareness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, and one of the things I always say to parents is uh, oftentimes they'll learn something themselves. And that's my favorite email to get is uh, <laughs> from a parent that says, yeah, my kid really liked your book, but can I really refuse to answer questions? And, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, definitely for parents, I think parents will enjoy it as well. But you know, the biggest thing, especially with our new book, I would say, you know, it's not just about teaching kids what their rights are and, and what they have the right to be free from in terms of force and aggression towards their body, their mind, their property. It's also about how they can interact freely with others and teaching them those values of do no harm, don't steal property, 
you know, these things, you know, just that peaceful tolerance and understanding. And so I have a sticker on the back of my truck. It's the only sticker I have. It's small. And all it says is peace, love, liberty. That's it. Three words. I think I got it from Students for Liberty and years ago. And, and that's really what we're talking about at its core. And so teaching kids, I mean, it, it could be as simple as teaching them the golden rule, which is what we, we, we mentioned in our book. It's just that simple idea of live and let live, do no harm. And, and that's something that not just helps your child protect themselves as they grow, but it really allows them to interact freely with others in a really peaceful and tolerant way, which in the long run, if we start with this generation and move forward, is really going to be beneficial to the future. Because then we can really work on moving towards a more peaceful side of humanity. That's, that's beautiful. So, Rory, any final thoughts, your website, ways people can get in touch with you, please? Yeah, uh, you can find all the books on Amazon. Um, you can find my website. It's just RoryMargraf.com. Really easy. Um, you can find and all my just, books it's there. Just, and it's, it's, it's just the way it sounds. M-A-R-G-R-A-F. And we will have that in the description. That's it. And, uh, and then one thought uh, for parents, if, especially for young kids, if you go on my website, there's a tab that says scripts. And there we have, I designed these with a friend of mine. He's a defense attorney in Arizona. We have rights scripts for kids that they can carry with them. So if they do get stopped by authorities, they can just read this. It'll assert their rights for them. And there's a space on the back for a phone number for parents or legal guardian as well as an attorney. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever works for you. And then if everyone could do me a big favor, this is probably the biggest thing. Uh, follow Andrea Moranu. She's my illustrator. She is probably the most wonderful person I've ever talked to, met, worked with, just the most fantastic person. She did such a beautiful job with these books. Um, you can follow her on Instagram at Andrea Illustration as well as Facebook. So make sure you follow her and give her a shout out. That would mean the world to her. And we'll make sure those links are in there as yep. well. Thank you so much for joining us, Rory, and for everybody who is helping his effort to protect America's children, protect their rights with education, and help protect them from abusive authority. Really, thank you so much for being a part of this. And this is, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be able to share an interview like this with, with my audience on, on a slightly different subject than, than we get into because, uh, on, on, you know, when we're covering the news, because a lot of people don't realize what this is about and, and protecting people, protecting the most vulnerable. And what, what Rory has figured out how to do here is such a beautiful part of what it means to, to use this beautiful idea of libertarianism and, and, and ethics to make the world a better place. So thank you for joining us. Peace and love. Thanks for having me, Adam.